So I want to give a, uh, or make a cl clarification about um, what I refer to as certain technical conditions that we need to invoke in order to work out the balance of energy in the form that was presented. Okay. So uh, I'm going to uh, title this uh, clarification as boundary conditions on omega t. All right, here's the situation. We have the body and so far, you know, whenever we talked about applying traction boundary conditions, we always spoke in terms of a subset of the boundary that we denoted as partial of omega t sub t, okay? And on this portion of the boundary, I, we always said that we have some traction specified, right? And though I'm drawing, drawing it at only one point, really the way we want to think about it is that there is a distribution of traction, right? So T is a traction field, which is defined in that part of the boundary. Now this uh, naturally brings up the question, which um, I've been avoiding, uh, and that question is what about the rest of the boundary, okay? For um, mechanics, and whether we're doing solid or fluid mechanics, it doesn't matter, but if we say that part of the boundary is where we are specifying the traction, you de do need to have other conditions on the rest of the boundary, okay? And uh, so, so the remaining boundary subset, the complement of the traction boundary, is what we will denote as partial of omega t sub u. The u there um, reminds us of the displacement, okay? And um, on, that, on this boundary subset, we have displacement boundary conditions specified, okay? So on this part of the boundary, we may have u equals u bar, okay? All right? So, partial of omega t sub t is the traction boundary right and partial of omega sub t sub u is the displacement boundary Right? On the traction boundary, we have T equals sigma N. All right? That's a boundary condition on the stress, which is one of the quantities that describes what's happening to the body. Okay? Um, and on the displacement boundary, we have U, which is the displacement field, equals U bar, which is a given field. Okay? All right, so this, this, this is given, All right? Likewise here, in the traction condition, what is given to us is T. What we have to determine is sigma, All right? On the displacement boundary, what's given to us is U bar, and whereas U is the field that we're trying to determine inside the body. Okay, now, what we also require is what we call dead loading. Okay, so we consider cases of dead loading, which uh, essentially means that the boundary conditions are not changing in time. Okay, so we consider dead loading. Okay, where we're saying that U bar um, let's say this, right? Right, we have this, and likewise the time derivative of 
retraction and I realize this is, <laughs> looks strange there because we finally have a collision between the two uses of T, okay? But that, that is just a, a uh, material time derivative of the traction, okay? We are saying that this two is zero, okay? All right? So, so these, these, these are the conditions of dead loading that we have. We, we are essentially saying that, look, we, we, we have loading that's acting on the body, it, it's producing certain velocities and, and, and so on, but those conditions that we're applying on the body themselves are fixed in time, okay? So what this lets us do is, is the following, okay? So now we can equivalently, when, when we start out with the external power, Right? When we say it is the body force dotted with the velocity dV plus integral over partial of omega t, uh, t dotted with the velocity dA, we can pretty much without, uh, we, we can actually add here the displacement boundary, okay? And here we can simply write this as sigma n dotted with v dA, okay? But here's what happens. On the displacement boundary, we have a displacement boundary condition. And we've uh, required that that displacement boundary condition is fixed with respect to time. What that means is that on this boundary, on the displacement boundary, the velocity, which we know is uh, partial of u with respect to time, right? That is the definition of the velocity, right? Um, it is equal to partial with respect to time of u bar, which we are requiring to be zero, okay? All right, so we're really adding that second term in there, but, but it, it, it really does not do anything to our conditions. And then when we apply the Cauchy theorem, there we get that. Right? So essentially what we're saying is that we're, we're essentially applying, we're basically applying our boundary conditions here on, on these two boundary subsets, okay? Now, never mind the fact that the second integral is zero. What this lets us do is write out that as an integral over partial of omega t, sigma n dot v. Okay, so the idea is we are including the, the, the work done on the displacement boundary, okay? And we're saying that, well, in, if we consider dead loading, that term is zero, okay? All right, so, so we're really not adding anything to the, to the body in, in addition to the external loads, right? We're not adding any work uh, coming in from the outside if V is equal to zero right, on, on the displacement boundary, okay? And then we're able to combine both those boundaries, okay, in this form. And it's on this form that we then apply the divergence theorem, okay? From the divergence theorem, this is equal to integral over omega t. Uh, now we know that this becomes divergence of uh, v dot sigma. dV, okay? So this is what happens in the case of dead loading, okay? All right? Um, now, now you may wonder, well, does this not work if you don't have dead loading, okay? So even if you don't have dead loading, you can do exactly this, right? It is just that you would be, supposing we were to say that this, this condition V equals partial of U with respect to T is not equal to zero on the boundary. You want to, you want to relax this, this, this requirement of dead loading on the displacement boundary, right? You can't, you can't quite re relax it on the traction boundary, but you can re relax it on the displacement boundary. And then what that lets us do 
is to is, is to observe that well yes e even without that condition we're able to add this back in right and that if 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 we were not equal to zero on on d on on the displacement boundary if this condition did not hold right uh, the second integral would not vanish okay but then what we would be doing is also including the work done internally by the stresses on the specified displacement boundary okay uh, and then we could still get get, get to this last to, to this form of the boundary term and then go on to that using the divergence theorem right this is this is using the gauss theorem right and from here we could proceed just as we did before okay so these are just so, so certain technical conditions which come in with with uh, the use of boundary conditions in the context of the balance of energy